Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And I'm Dan. And this is a park bench. We are still in Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania. Got it right this time. Yeah, opposite uh, a waterfall. Yep, it's still pretty beautiful here. Uh, and this time, Dan is under our strong sunlight illumination dappled. Illumina. Oh, you, Did oh. I just say illumination? Yes, you said illumination. <laughs> I love um, illumination. And it, it will move. You'll, you'll be highlighted next. <laughs> you will have noticed the title of this video, which is kind of a spoiler for the end. We had a good day the other day. Yeah, we did. Thank uh, you, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone who helped put together the trip. Um, we went to a telescope. And if you want to know about our journey there and our thoughts on the way there, then look at our previous video. Don't do the accent. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we, we got to the telescope. Um, and when we get there, we drive into the car park and we were told we would see it. We know where to go because you turn off when you see the telescope. It was foggy. Could not see a thing. It was just this mist down, for, down sight. You could just see to the other end of the car park. And I was thinking, I looked on satellite view when we got there and I'm pretty sure it should be about there. You were pointing completely the wrong way. No, wasn't yes, you were. Mm -hmm. You were pointing about 20 degrees left to where it was. That's not completely. That would be completely. Because <laughs> Justin came out and went to point where it is, and he went, he's over, oh. <laughs> you can normally see it. <laughs> yeah, like, well, where is it? We can't see it. Where... Oh, no, it's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we realized the fog was burning off at that exact moment, so very rapidly before. But, uh, uh, time lapse. Yes, time lapse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> before we got a chance to do anything, to basically introduce ourselves, we <laughs> just kind of sat there for, for 20 minutes on a bench waiting for the time lapse to, to happen. <laughs> yes. And the fog blew away and we could see this big telescope in yep. the distance and went, that, that's too far away for us to be able to tell how big it actually is. Yes. It doesn't look that big. This one isn't far. This one is small. <laughs> we didn't actually go there for a little while because we did some interviews first. We figured yeah. it, it wasn't sensible to go down site until all the mist had burned off and mm. we knew it was going to be okay to go down there. Um, so what do we do? We interviewed Carla and her anechoic chamber. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, I've never been in an anechoic chamber. Have you not? No, it's, it's very lovely. foamy. It is. I've, I've been in an audio anechoic chamber before. Um, at my uni, at York Uni, they had one for audio -y stuff, but this was a radio frequency anechoic chamber for them to test radio frequency interference. Yes. I've been in the one at the National Physical Laboratory uh, near London. It's much the same setup but I think they use it for little satellite bases and trying to work out if how good they are at transmitting rather than how good they are at locking them away in a box. And you, you described Carla to me later as incredibly clever. RF but engineering is hard. And when you're trying to catch certain things and she builds the boxes that keeps the noisy equipment inside that you don't want the noise to escape from. And one thing electronics is really good at is being noisy. <laughs> Someone described radio signals to me as like water. It'll find any gap to get through and any conductive thing to... And it will, along. and it doesn't even have to be broadcasting. Even an ethernet cable, yep. the, the speed of that, the data going one zero one zero one zero, mm. is turning on and off a, a, a really low energy, but still a, a radio field, mm. so which she, is enough yeah. to cause interference. So she, she has to figure out a way to get the data out without getting the data where it's not supposed to be. Mm. She said she likes to put ethernet data on fiber because fiber glass is not conductive. Yeah. It's, that's just light rather than... Yeah. A bit of photon. It's yeah. Just, it, yeah, so Carla was lovely and drafted in at very short notice to come talk to us. So, yeah. <laughs> Knock on the door. Hi, <laughs> we hear you know things. Could you talk to us about things please and show us your cave of foam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we talked to Chuck. Chuck was lovely. We, we ended up having lunch with Chuck. Yeah. Um, and Chuck and his truck. Ch uh, Chuck, Chuck and the truck. Chuck and the truck. Um, uh, he was the uh, RF interference. Um, external. Another, yeah, external yeah. engineer. He went to find the stuff that was interfering. He had a cool looking workshop with a load of oscilloscopes and yep. frequency counters and soldering irons. And he had a van. And well, a pickup you've, truck. You'll have hopefully seen the van by now. He described it as his Ghostbusters van. No, Carla described it as the uh. Ghostbusters van. <laughs> I didn't mention the phrase Ghostbusters van to Chuck because I suspect he's heard that a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, and you talked a lot about broadcast engineering because turns out he also does that. Yeah, I, you know by now what I do in my time. So I recognize quite a bit of the equipment in there. 
just from the bits of electronics I do. And he mentioned in his, his spare time, he works at the local radio station. Yep. Which is inside the Radio Quiet Zone. <laughs> yes. Quite a lot of people refer to you as the enemy. Well, I kind of am. Their whole... Point, their, their whole... Um, what? Raison that, d'etre. Yes, thank you. Their <laughs> raison d'etre is... Oh, Check just, you and your proper French R. Oh, yeah. Just, Matt Gray's French R's. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> because the whole point of their being is to stop all this RF interference coming in. And my job is to broadcast make the RF happen <laughs> broadcast over radio frequencies yep. <laughs> and it's funny that uh, Chuck a guy that does that in his job does the exact opposite in his spare time too yeah. <laughs> that, that means a bit of irony there for you so we had dinner inside a Faraday cage essentially inside which there was a microwave inside a Faraday cage that was amazing because that's another one of those things like we mentioned in the last video no one can have microwaves they're, they're too noisy you can they just have to be in another box and that box has got a big metal gasket around it and yeah. it keeps all the interference inside it <laughs> so there's so there was that and then we went down site i'm not missing anyone out there am firstly I? we ate in their canteen very good canteen yeah thank good you canteen, thank mm -hmm. you um and then we went down site safety helmets on in into a jeep yeah we went down with justin and um, ryan. ryan one of the scientists yep uh, and on the way we pass a load of other telescopes including the one that frank drake used in the first SETI project, which huh. for me was kind of full, oh, okay, yep, good, that's history there. That was lovely. Can either of you explain the weird polar design telescope to me? They... No. I'll, put up, I'll put up a photo. It, it didn't use like an X and a Y axis, it had an axis at an angle, in such a way that rather than to, to watch a star track across the sky at some random angle, Rather than having to move both axes at the same time and very precisely to get the um, track of the star, it was lined up with the axis pointing at the pole star. So when you ro rotated around that axis, the telescope rotated in the same kind of direction-ish that the sky would. So you just so rather than complicated maths, you just need to turn a motor on at the right yeah. speed. All right. So we, is that yeah. why it's like a giant cog thing? Yeah. The yeah. Whole thing. Okay. So we kept was, going past that and kept and they have they have a little planet walk. Oh yeah, the scale model of the universe. Scale model solar of the universe. System. Yeah, the solar system. Yeah, the sun is at the, the base camp. Pluto is at the the uh, the big telescope at the end. At half mast. Yeah, Pluto had a flag at half mast because <laughs> well, it's only half a planet now. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that little touch. And and then we get to the telescope. You can see it looming in the distance as we're driving over, peering behind trees. Then we ran it and went, oh yeah. Yeah, that's quite big. Yeah. It's quite big. It's quite tall. <laughs> how, Sta how? Standing at the base of it, of it, I asked, ah, is this about as far as everyone else goes when they have a tournament? Nope. They don't even get through that gate, which is mm -hmm. like 50 metres behind us. <laughs> uh, we should point out this was a maintenance day. Yeah. Like, there was no observation being done from there then. We which were allowed was turned off yeah. and it was locked off with a padlock around the on-off yeah. switch. Yeah. For it, safety. Yeah. There like, was... Everyone who goes in puts a padlock on the on-off switch, is it? Or yeah, takes the key it's, out it's of it? It's a lock, like six lock holes in, lock in it. system. It had six holes in a little claspy thing, and you can't undo the claspy thing that stops the on-off switch working until all the locks are undone. I like how it's like the physical on-off switch oh, yeah. of the yeah. whole telescope. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's just a great like, way of doing safety systems. And Brilliant. it's not a remote switch, it is inside effectively a shipping container on yeah. the side of the... Um, a very well shielded shipping yeah. container. <laughs> it's a metal box. Yeah. Um, and then we you know, we get a few shots. It's like right, let's let's go up the telescope. How tall is this telescope? Big. Someone said Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty can lie down in the telescope bowl. <laughs> okay. That's how without peeking out the top. That's how big that oh, bowl is. This sounds okay. like you don't have a number to hand. No, I don't. Rainbow Comics. Set. Um. <laughs> <laughs> how are you with heights, Dan? Heights are okay. How are you with mesh floors, Dan? No. <laughs> you keep inviting me to really high things, really tall things. Like we went to London Gateway and went yep. up to like the world's tallest key crane. Well, the world's identically tallest key crane. And like, that's, that's not good. Now one nice thing, slightly nice thing is that there's lift. It's, yep. not, it's not just steps, there's a lift. Mm. But then you get to the top and they open the door and he just says, Dan, don't look down because it is just a mesh floor. It's a mesh floor down to the bracings of the telescope and then just asphalt. Now I'm, I'm- Or concrete, something like that. I like, 
I can be dodgy with heights. As long as something's structurally sound and I can't fall through it or off it, I'm generally okay. And although this had holes in it, it was that way up metal grid. Yeah. So it had a lot of structure to it. The thing I liked the least was the floor of the lift, which was sheet metal, which is really thin <laughs> and has a little bounce to it. So yeah. in the lift, I was worse. Okay. <laughs> On it, it was like, oh yeah, I was just wandering around, camera my, leaning over edges. Yeah, my first few steps were a bit tentative. And by the end, when we were interviewing Ryan, I'm just casually leaning back on a railing. <laughs> just kind of talking and looking down. Oh, this is cool. D yeah, this is on the second platform. This is at dish level. You were kind of, um, you were gripping the sides at that point. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> so the place has two levels. There's three. Uh, three. We didn't three. get up to the third because it was too windy. Mm. Um, there's the, you take the lift up to the first level, which is at sort of the cogs, gears, Axis. Axis is the word I'm looking for. That Under makes, the dish. That makes the dish do Under that axis. Dish. <laughs> and I'm ignoring that. Uh, <laughs> and then you go up to another more funicular lift, which nice. sort of goes up diagonal, mm. Lily, which goes up to the, um, that bit, the, the, the bowl, bowl, the, bowl level, the, the, the edge level. of the bowl. Yeah. And then there is another level, which will get you up to the receiving platform, the actual bit at the top of the arm. We were not allowed up there, it was far too windy to actually do that. Uh, which means that even if we had got up there, all you'd have heard was <laughs> on the audio. Um, that was high enough, that was good. We, mm. we got up the world's largest steerable telescope. And, and, and bugger about on it for an hour. <laughs> we did not bugger about on it. No, we we felt, although you did get a hell of a selfie. You got, you got a hell of a selfie. We all got a hell of a selfie. This, this <laughs> just in Ryan in that selfie. And the, the f thing I found amusing was that um, there's this, the dish is, um, as we mentioned in the video, made of, of actuators. It's got loads of different panels that can precisely move to make sure that the dish stays exactly parabolic to get the, excuse me, the best, um, oh, root beer. <laughs> um, get the best parabolic shape so then it can ref focus yep. the signals better into the receiver. And that's all, you know, really precise electronics and mechanical bits. But the, the walkway just goes out and then stops in such a way that you can just step right into the dish. Yeah. I didn't. No. But you could have. But the theory is that anyone who has already got past all the site security and somehow got up there, probably not going to just walk on the dish. I got such an urge just to roll a ball down it. It looks so <laughs> flat and smooth, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you seen the dish? The what? The what? The film set at the Australian radio no, receiving oh, no. dish. There's a bit where they play cricket in the dish. Nice. Ooh. Is that at the spacey one in Canberra? Yes. Near Canberra. That's the one where the the the, the Deep Space Network have one, I think. Uh, yeah, that's what, be the one. The film is about getting the footage back from Apollo 11. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. In a small rural Australian town. Ah. Uh. So, yeah, then we, we went back down. We, we said thank you to everyone, we got back to base. Uh, we go and interview Justin in the control room, which is... Mm -hmm. and then I can't We hadn't been in the control room at this point. No, I like a control room, because control rooms have cool buttons. <laughs> this was mostly computers. I remember going to Jodrell Bank, which is Britain's radio telescope when I was a kid, and they had a mock-up of the control room. I was like, oh, there's buttons I can click. This is computers, because of course it is. They had some buttons, they had emergency stop buttons yeah. and a few switch panels, but still it was yeah. a, a multiple screen computer. Lots and, of posters. Yeah. And after interviewing uh, Justin, we had a yeah. chat with Rob, who was the control room operator. Yep, yeah, he was lovely. And he was lovely. He was having a chat uh, about ha the, well, the stuff we were saying in the previous video about how it's not exactly as strict. Mm. And... But at this point, it is past 4 p.m., which means that everyone is off the dish. That's the end of the maintenance window. He's yeah. actually been down there and locked up after us. Yeah. Somehow beat us back. He think... knows there's no one there. And he says, uh, We've got a few minutes till the, they're scheduled to use it. Do you want me to move it about a bit for you? Uh, okay. <laughs> Time lapse. Just a second. There's a balcony there. There's a huge... They have good doors in yeah, that place. Proper, proper. Faraday cage doors. Like, you know, big handle doors. Yeah. I was like, are we allowed out there to time lapse? They went, yeah. Yeah, no one's observing right now. They just... Yeah. Like, there's, they have a 20 minute w window where he... No one's observing. No one's there for maintenance, and he probably needs to set it up to point the right way anyway. <laughs> yeah. So you go out and set up a camera. And while Matt is out setting up a camera, I get an idea, and I go in and talk to Rob. I say, Rob, you know when you, you're going to push that button to make it go? 
can Matt push the button to make it go? Because he quite likes pushing buttons to make things go. <laughs> and we are now going to cut to the footage of what happened next. If you go back in, I've asked if you can press the button to make it go. <laughs> you should go press the button to make it go. Is that definitely rolling? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just an enter button on a keyboard, Matt, but I thought if anyone should... <laughs> <laughs> that look, just just so you know that that look. I like a good so for the most part, it's already been previously set up. And what I did is I'm basically going to point the dish all the way down towards the ground, and I'm going to try and swing it around so it sweeps across us. It's all set up. All you got to do is take that mouse, go over to where it says Move to, and click on Move to, and then it'll come up with a screen that asks you to confirm, and then just hit OK. And now, just wait for about a second and you'll see it moving. Yeah, that was quite good. Yeah. Okay, I'm just clicking a button on a computer, but the thing is I made the world's largest steerable radio telescope do like almost full 360. Yeah. And I, like, it was just click there, click there. And he, he programmed him, told yep. it what to do, but I made it go. <laughs> you issued the command. Oh, yes. It wasn't a bad trip, that was it. That, that, right. that was a good trip. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Oh, thank you, guys. And thank you, Justin. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Mike. And Carla Chuck. And Chuck. And Ryan. Ryan. And I think... And Rob. And Rob. Rob in the control room. And everyone else we met there, you were all yes. lovely. And the catering staff who fed us. Yes. Always got to thank the catering staff. Always. <laughs> so that's it. That is, I think, the last thing we're... The last missive we're sending from West Virginia. We've... Uh, Unless we come up with anything exciting. We're only halfway through our trip so far. Yeah. We've got a few sightseeing things, but we've done the big thing. Yeah, we've done the big thing. It's been lovely. Uh, yeah. It's all right.